your coach, Helen Yuskovic. Welcome to your coach, Helen Yuskovic. That's me. I am now your virtual coach. I am what you call a professional life student. I've discovered firsthand that heartbreak will happen. Health issues do arise, but being successful doesn't ever need to be compromised. Twice a week, I will be your virtual coach feeding you the juiciest knowledge that you can use to live your best life, no matter what gets thrown your way. Shall we begin? P.S. To ensure that you never miss your session, hit subscribe on your podcast app now. Hey, 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 can you believe it's episode number 11? OMG, 11 is one of my favorite numbers in the world. And today I'm talking about one topic that has plagued my life for a long time, maybe yours as well. And that is scale weight. Always walking to the scales to weigh yourself. Always walking to the scales to see if you've lost another kilo. Always thinking about what do I weigh today? What do I weigh tomorrow? What did I weigh yesterday? Uh, I don't know if you're like me, but scale weight has just been this nagging little voice, annoying one at the back of my head. And that's why I dedicated today's episode to scale weight so that we can begin 2020 without worrying about the burden of the number on that little box on the floor. Now, in today's episode, I chat about a lot of things. I talk about how often you should weigh yourself, especially if you're on a fat loss journey. I'll also talk about what to do with your scales if you are in a normal weight range. Mm. I'll also chat about what really matters when it comes to fat loss and what to focus on with your physical appearance. This is a good one. I'll chat about what to work on when it comes to fat loss because let's think about it properly. Fat loss is really the reason you're weighing yourself, right? And I'll also talk about what you should do instead of focusing on the scales. I am going to give you 11 tips in today's episode number 11 on what you should do instead of focusing on the scales. I've got so many tips here today so that you can focus on something other than that dreaded scale. I am so excited about this. I've been a personal trainer for a while now and this topic still comes up to this day. So tune in and before I dive into today's episode, I just want to read today's review of the week and that is from Jo Saka. And she gives me a five-star review and says, Thanks for the encouragement. So simple, but things that I just don't do. New year, new me. I love that, Joe, and thank you so much for that review. I'm so excited that this motivates you to begin new habits and have a powerful 2020. Now let's get into today's episode. Being a personal trainer and working in the fitness industry, I always hear a little bit of obsession with scale weight and what the scale says and the scale determining whether you feel good about yourself or not. This obsession with scale weight has been going on since I can remember. Since I was a young girl, I remember my mother always saying, I weigh this much, I weigh that much. And being in the fitness industry and the health industry, it's very hard to pull people away from that. I do believe the scales have a place, especially if you're obese, because it gives you a good grasp of how you're going with your weight loss journey. And it's a good way to see your improvements while you're going back down to a normal weight range. If you're in a normal weight range, this is where the scales can play tricks on your mind. I see this all the time with women, especially. I just need to lose four more kilos. I put on a kilo today. I put on two kilos in the last two weeks. How come I weighed 500 grams less yesterday? And I feel like I repeat myself so many times with my clients 
There are so many factors that come into play when it comes to your weight. Weighing yourself every day should really be looked at because what is the point of weighing yourself every single day to see a number on the scales moving a little bit up or down? If fat loss is your goal, then weigh yourself every four weeks. There's no point in weighing yourself every day because you're not going to know if that's water weight or you're not going to know what it is. What if you need to do a poo and you've got that extra 500 grams in your body? So yeah, my main piece of advice is stop weighing yourself every day and stop obsessing with that number. It, It sounds like a really bad habit and it is a really bad habit to have. And I I see programs coming up all the time saying lose five kilos in 10 days or I lost 10 kilograms with this plan. Lose kilos, get healthy. Kilos, kilos, kilos. I get so repulsed by headlines like that because this focus on weight loss as your ticket to a healthy, attractive body seriously needs to go. And if this is your mind space still in 2020, you need to get with the times. I recommend ditching your scale. It's completely useless, especially if you're in a normal weight range. And you can definitely tell if you lose a lot of weight or if you put on a lot of weight. You know, and if you do have health concerns that cause those huge weight fluctuations, then the next protocol is to see a doctor, not to eat less or to eat more. I wholeheartedly believe that unless you suffer from a metabolic disease like obesity, everyone out there should just take their scales and throw them in the bin. It really can drive you crazy. And I hear it still to this day. I haven't had scales for many, many, many years. We have a scale in our gym which is the only place I weigh myself, but I don't really do it that much. And the reason is, you know, what the scale says is meaningless. Like, how do you know how much is fat, muscle, bone, or water? What really matters is your body composition. And you can make enormous changes in your physical appearance without losing or gaining a kilo. Sometimes my clients will put on a kilo, but they've lost over 20 centimeters and it blows their mind. They still say to this day, I don't understand. But when you first start to lift weights, do some high intensity cardio, eat nutritious foods, unprocessed foods, your body just becomes like a fat burning furnace primed to develop beautiful muscle tone and muscle tissue in your body. Don't you want that? Having an athletic functional body is the best body that you can have. Something that moves easy, a body that is healthy, pain-free, disease-free. That's the body that you should be trying to attain. Now the scales fail you in that They only show you a number. I just really want to get into your brain today so that the scales don't really serve a huge purpose in your life. Back in the day, yes, because they didn't have all of the information that we have now. It doesn't show you that you've lost centimeters around your waist. The scales don't show you that you've now got a more defined abdominal midsection. The scales don't show you that there is more tone and definition in your arms. And your weight can fluctuate quite a bit due to so many factors like sodium, carbohydrate intake, water intake, females for our monthly hormonal visitors. So just Focusing on this number can really, really prevent you from realizing the progress that you've made. And it can drive you absolutely crazy trying to push that number down. 
I'm all about sustainability with nutrition and fitness and health things. So a more sustainable approach comes from shifting your focus away from losing kilograms and more so changing it towards having a more aesthetically pleasing appearance. If you just try that and get into that headspace, I will be the happiest coach ever. You should focus on things like how you feel walking around, the way that your clothes fit, the improvements that you're making in your body, and the confidence that you're building through taking control of your exercise, nutrition, and recovery. Self-confidence is one of the most motivating things when it comes to your health and fitness journey. I love when people's self-confidence starts shining through. I love seeing that transformation and that process happen right in front of my eyes. And that's what you should be aspiring to do. Working on your self-confidence through achieving things like a more aesthetically pleasing appearance less fat tissue, more muscle tissue, more chiseled, less wobbly. (laughs) So just do yourself a favor and just throw the scales in the bin. Say your goodbyes. It's time to move on. And it's time to just start defining yourself by something way more important than a number. You really must start focusing on the way you look and the way that you feel. That is the mindset that you should be walking around with every single day. One that is proud of the way that you look and one that is at peace and content with the way that you feel. If you really need to know your weight, it's much better to have something we call a DEXA scan. It's a scan that measures your body fat, muscle mass, and bone mass. So I do this for my clients once or twice a year. There's a few different types of these scans. Some you just lay down in this machine. It's like an MRI and it scans your body. It only takes about five minutes. There's another one where you can stand on something that's like scales that has handles. And that one can also scan your bone, muscle, and fat tissue. Those are good gauges to do once or twice a year. It will give you what you are. So say you're like, I don't know, 24% body fat and your muscle tissue is this much and your bones weigh that much. And it actually shows your bone mineral density as well, which is really good. And at least that way you have like a gauge of exactly what your physical body is Because we're not just made up of fat and muscle, but there's a lot of things that are inside our bodies that can contribute to scale weight. So what should you do instead of focusing on the scales? I think that's the question you're asking yourself, right? Well, one thing to do is to assess how much you trained last week. Training frequency is really important in getting results ensuring that you're getting your regular training in and that you're not making excuses and that you're actually showing up. 80% of your results are actually just from showing up. I say that to my clients all the time, no matter how you're feeling, just show up. If there's a voice inside your head every morning that tells you just to stay in bed or to snooze, tell that voice, thank you for trying to protect me, but I want to be more. So could you please kindly F off? And then just roll out of bed and make your way. You know, that inner critic in our head, especially if it's negative, really needs to just go. So it's just like training a muscle. So assess how often you trained last week. Another thing that you can do is look at your food and how you ate, how you eat. Was there a protein source in um, at least two of your meals? It's a vital nutrient, especially when it comes to retaining muscle tissue. And it's pretty essential for fat loss. I used to eat so much protein, but you know, you don't have to eat kilos and kilos of protein until you feel sick, you know, uh, unless bodybuilding is your thing. 
you don't have to eat that much protein, but you must have some every single day. And always remember to focus on lean meats and fish, vegetarian stuff like tofu, tempeh, quinoa, peas, lentils. You know, there's lots of sources of protein that aren't animal and there's lots of sources of protein that aren't plant. So whatever your diet is, make sure you focus on that. Okay, so number one, instead of focusing on your scales, (laughs) which don't really tell us much at all, focus on how much training you did, how much training you're doing. Are you eating right? Another one is, did you get your proper seven to eight hours of sleep? It's a big one. Feeling refreshed in the morning is very likely going to support a productive week and keep your nutrition on track. Sleep has a huge part to play in your fat loss results. So please turn off technology an hour before bed and read a book in low light to help you get a nice sleep. Begin a nighttime ritual. Do something at nighttime that will help you to go to bed. Even getting sunlight in during the day will help your sleep at night. Another thing to focus on is how much strength training you did. So using strength training in your fat loss battle is pretty important to your goals so that you're not just smashing yourself with cardio and losing all that muscle tissue. Knowing how much you lift actually helps you track your performance and plan your training. So, you know, whatever you lift, say it's a 20 kilo back squat, make sure you're increasing all the time and don't let your head keep giving you excuses like, oh, I'm not feeling up to it today or, oh, um, I just want to start at this weight. Challenge yourself and tell that voice in your head, thank you for trying to protect me. But could you kindly please F off because you're stunting my growth and I am worthy of more. Don't let that voice in your head keep you small. So it's pretty important to keep tracking your progress at the gym and making sure you're constantly increasing, increase in your session, even by one or two kilos. Just Do things to challenge your muscle tissue, especially if fat loss is one of your goals. And something else to do instead of the scales is, as I was talking about before, track your body composition. Use measurements. Use your measuring tape. Take photos. My clients hate weigh-in day. (laughs) To this day, (laughs) when I'm like, it's time to take your measurements, a whole bunch of excuses come up. and. Don't fear it. It's really good to be staying accountable and it's really good to be able to track your progress, especially with things like measuring tapes and photos. That way you can actually see your changes. Now, when it comes to measurements, it's different for men and women because, you know, men don't really want to be getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They want to be increasing their muscle mass. And what happens is, say, the chest circumference gets bigger, the arms get bigger. So waist circumference is a good one for everyone, males and females. It provides, you know, a quick glimpse at body fat distribution. And those people with a greater proportion of fat around the midsection tend to be at a higher risk for chronic diseases, such as heart disease and diabetes. So if you're going to do any measurement and one, one only, make sure it's the waist circumference. Something to keep in mind is knowing that muscle is denser than fat. So as you build muscle, you might weigh the same as you've always weighed, but your body becomes physically leaner. Measurements really allow you to physically monitor these changes in a way that scales just don't have the capacity to do. Something else that you can focus on is becoming more active each day. So try to do 150 to 200 minutes of moderate intensity physical exercise each week, like walking, cycling, gardening, whatever it is. You know how they say get your 10,000 steps in? I say get your 200 minutes in. 
with strength training, you know, try to get in at least two sessions per week. That's what I do for my clients. On a Monday and a Wednesday, we do our strength training. And don't forget to focus on every muscle in the body. So don't just do <laughs> legs. Don't just do chest. Make sure you do the other little muscles as well. We're a human and we have lots of muscles in our body. So that's why it's really good to work with a coach because they will make sure that they attack every single muscle group in your body. Something else to focus on is flexibility, mobility, stability, yoga, trying to do that at least two times a week to maintain and enhance your range of motion. We don't want to get stiff. We don't want to get injured. We want to remain supple. We want our muscles to remain lengthened, especially if you're a female. You don't want to look stocky like a pit bull. You want your muscles to be elongated. Flexibility is very important. Your range of motion is very important, especially as we move into old age. You don't want to lose that. Now, if you're one of those people that are very flexible, stability is something that you should be working on. So that's why I went and did a yoga course so that I could bring that to my clients because it's so important to be stable and flexible and mobile. And that's if one of my clients is injured or experiencing pain, I'll always recommend the yoga class. Functional fitness training is also something great to focus on instead of scale weight. I do this with my clients as well once a week. We do a functional strength class. And we also do a cardio hit class because functional work is very important to improve your balance, your coordination, your agility, your speed, your power. And it's good to do this at least twice a week, which we do as well. Again, especially as we get older, we tend to lose those sorts of things. Another thing that's good to focus on rather than your scales, is your energy levels. You know, that is a direct reflection of how you are treating your body. People who eat right, people who exercise regularly and get enough sleep are giving their bodies the exact tools that it needs to function at an optimum level, which means they end up feeling mentally alert and excited for the day. Now, look, I know that every day is not going to be super duper amazing, but focusing on your energy is a really quick reminder that you might need to make a few adjustments. Even a 10 minute walk when you're feeling low can really help get those feel good endorphins pumping, putting you back in the right mental space so that you can face the rest of your day. Something else to focus on instead of scales is how your clothes are fitting especially now, right after Christmas. <laughs> now, this one is kind of like uh, monitoring your body measurements. But this one is a lot more fun. Sometimes if people don't fit into their jeans, I use that as a goal. I'm like, right, let's make that a goal. We'll get back into your jeans. As you keep getting healthier and healthier and fitter and fitter and eating better, your body composition starts to change and you start to get that body shape that you've always wanted. Clothing is one of my favorite things to use instead of scales. And it's really, really motivating, especially if you've <laughs> used to fit into these jeans where you didn't have any muffin top hanging over. And then you start working on yourself and then that disappears and you fit beautifully back into those jeans. So that's something else you can focus on. Find a pair of a top or a pair of pants that you used to fit into and use that as your focus instead of your scales. And one more thing is to always just make sure you get a checkup with your doctor or a functional doctor just to make sure that everything is okay. You know, uh, fixating yourself on a number, on a scale, doesn't provide any information at all about your actual health status. That's why it's important to, you know, check in with your doctor and get a full physical exam every so often, once a year. And that way you know that your blood pressure is good, your cholesterol panel is good, your blood sugar levels. 
so that you know that you know what's going on inside is all good and unfortunately scales just don't have the capacity to do that (laughs) so I hope those ways that I've just spoken about have really helped shift that mindset that weighing yourself all the time is necessary because it is not necessary unless you are obese really overweight and you are focusing on getting back to a normal weight range okay if you're in a normal weight range just focus on those things that i mentioned before take a load off stop stressing about the number you know i'm 75 kilos i want to be 70 why you know last year i wanted to be 68 but, you know, my scale weight doesn't define me. You know, there's there's lots more going on and I've had a little bit of stress lately that's been going on. So my body's still coming back to normal, but it feels so good right now because I am so pumped and so motivated to get the body of my dreams this year. I have goals with my physical body that I want to achieve this year and I am so pumped to get those. And I'm so pumped for all of you that have set your health and fitness and physical goals. So let's just keep moving forward. Take an action step today towards your health and fitness goal. Anything. Just do something. And ditch those scales if they are driving you crazy. There is way more to life than worrying about a bloody number on a set of scales. I hope that you found this coaching session really valuable. I hope it's helped you change a habit, especially if weighing yourself every two minutes is one of those things that you like doing. And if you feel like you know someone that is obsessed with the scales, pass this episode on to them and let them have a listen as well. Maybe you could help them ease the suffering that's going on inside their head. I just want to thank you again for spending time with me today. I want to thank you for your reviews and I want to thank you for your comments. They really mean the world to me and they really help me keep pushing this show along. If there's any key takeaways that you took away from today, please post them up on my Instagram at Helen underscore Yuskovic. And if a supportive group is what you're after, join us at the whole crew on Facebook. That's the whole crew, H-O-L, crew. Because my business is called Whole Health, Holistic Health. And I'm all about providing that support network for you and for people that just don't have that circle that lifts you up, that supports you, that holds your hand, that encourages you, that's positive. I also want to wish you the most beautiful weekend. And... Keep in mind, heartbreak does happen. Health issues do arise, but your success doesn't ever need to be compromised. Bye for now.